Welcome again everyone. So you are with me for JKE 316E Quantitative Economics. So today I'm going to discuss with you okay, a topic which is not covered in our textbook Managerial Statistics by Keller. So the topic that we'll be discussing is what we call as index number. So this is an extra topic uh, that will be uh, covered uh, in the syllabus of uh, JKE 316E Quantitative Economics. There are a few reasons why I would like to introduce this extra topic to you okay but before we proceed further okay let me recall some of the things that you have already come across okay when we discussed the earlier topics for example when we discussed chapter on time series you come across the topic of uh, time series on uh, consumer price index okay time series on the composite index under the uh, Bursa Saham okay so such uh, example of the uses of index number is basically something uh, that is very common in economics so for the lesson that we'll be discussing today, okay, the objective is that at the end of this session, you'll be able to calculate both last pairs and Parsh index number for price as well as for quantity. Okay, and you must uh, understand at the end what are the advantages as well as the disadvantages each of these uh, last pairs or Parsh index number. Okay, and then at the end, you'll be learning about how to splice index number. So the, the word splice means to put together. And then lastly, okay, in terms of the use of the consumer price index for index linking. Uh, in details, okay, uh, how actually we calculate the consumer price index, I will leave it to you to find out. Okay, there are a few uh, online resources that we highlight after this. Okay, now we are looking at this graph. Okay, this is from BusraMalaysia.com. Uh, okay, on the front page. So you see, okay, on one uh, side of the screen, you have the securities. Okay, and on the right hand side of the screen, you have derivatives. Okay, so this is uh, FSTE Bursa Malaysia Kuala Lumpur Composite Index. So the keyword that I'm stressing to you is Composite Index. So it shows the up and down, okay, in terms of the amount of shares traded in the market, okay. And uh, we are not doing time series, so don't worry about the graph. So basically, you'll be looking at uh, the index, for example, uh, on the left hand side of the screen, okay, the index, the highest amount is. 1710.43 and the lowest amount of index is 1702.600 okay so that is basically composite index in the uh, Bursa Malaysia or the uh, stock exchange okay for Malaysia okay another uses of index or the common usage of index is when we discuss uh, the inflation okay so in this case we are uh, I share with you here now okay an article okay in the star on January 26 2013 Okay, so the title is that higher inflation expected. So economists pack CPI, that's referring to the consumer price index, at between 2.5% and 3% this year. Okay, so it may look to you that 2.5 and 3% is a small percentage. But remember, we're talking about year-on-year -year changes. So 2.5% increase from last year. Okay, and what if last year is already 2.5% uh, increase? So we're talking about in two years, okay, there are quite a high amount of increase in the consumer price index. So in this case, uh, if you look at the third paragraph from above, okay, uh, the article said that economists has packed the, their estimate for the consumer price index CPI, which is the main gauge of inflation, to grow between 2.5% and 3%. So when people say that price is increasing, what they are saying is that they are looking at actually the, the uh, CPI index increase okay uh, to a certain extent we are still discussing about the use of index number so in this case i'm sharing with you an articles okay from today's news okay in the business times okay uh, so you see that uh, the article with the headings economy see slight rise in malaysia inflation rate so why is everyone is concerned okay assuming that you are an economist okay uh, so why is your prediction about the inflation rate for malaysia whether it's increase or decrease is important so the answer lies in the policy makers. Okay, so for those who already taken money in banking, so remember you already learned about monetary policy, okay, the governments need to adjust whether to expand the economy accordingly or to uh, contract the economy by using the monetary policy tools. Okay, so how do we, they know whether they need to expand the economy or they need to contract the economy by looking at this inflation rate, basically looking at the CPI. And uh, there are other indexes that um, not only uh, in terms of the consumer price index, we also have the 
industrial production index okay just now already discussed with you the composite index so this is all the examples of index numbers and if you are talking about you okay and me okay the uh, layman people okay the, what's the use of index so for, in this case we are talking about uh, let's say you you have a query okay let's say you are an expatriate coming to Malaysia or maybe okay you are in Penang you are going to uh, move to Kuala Lumpur so you're wondering about the cost of living in Kuala Lumpur so basically cost of living we are talking about you need to know about prices in Kuala Lumpur so again you, okay you need to look at index number so there are quite a few index that you can look for okay in this case okay you look at the one in the box so you have the consumer price index in this case excluding rent why we exclude rent okay in this CPI because remember a major portion of your uh, expenses per month is largely okay uh, for the rental of your accommodations if you are lucky enough to buy your accommodation okay that's good so in this case okay CPI can be including rent or CPI excluding rent okay and then you have separately okay the rent index the groceries index restaurants index the consumer price uh, index with rent and okay you also have the index for local purchasing power and in case you are wondering okay in Malaysia okay for the calculation of the monthly index of uh, consumer price okay the, the item that is being calculated okay uh, uh, the price that being used is for 460 items okay basically that's cover the consumer price index everything so we are back to the consumer price index so this is for Malaysia and here you can see on the left hand side okay the 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 first column okay we are looking at the main group of item in the Malaysian consumer price index so we have food and non-alcoholic beverage in one groups okay and then we have the alcoholic beverage and tobacco and then we have the clothing and the footwear housing water and electricity gas as well as other fuel okay furnishing uh, household equipment and routine household maintenance that's another group health one group transport communication recreation services and culture education restaurant and hotel there are also miscellaneous goods and services okay non uh, non-food items okay durable goods okay semi-durable goods and non-durable goods and also services so all of these are given weight okay the weight is uh, given in the second column uh, with a uh, heading WT dot so that refer to the weight so the total weight okay out of 100 how much we spend on food so we spend about 30.3 percent on food how much we spend on health for example for Malaysia basically we spend very little at 1.3 percent only uh, what are the other major expenditure so the, uh, other than that we spend a lot on housing water electricity gas and other fuel so basically that one is almost 27 percent so this is uh, our basket of goods and services that is being used okay, in order to calculate the consumer price index. So in the rest of the column, you see the changes, for example, from December 2011 to November 2012, okay, uh, on after one year, okay, and then you have uh, the index okay, in terms of per, uh, percentages change. Okay? So you can look at these in details. I'll give you the website after this. So when it comes to the uh, consumer price index, okay, in order for you to uh, understand, okay, or get the latest figures, okay, in terms of how actually uh, the, the departments calculate uh, this consumer price index or the industrial manufacturing index, okay, and there are other indexes, what you can do is go to this uh, the Jabatan Perangkaan Malaysia or the Malaysian Statistical Departments, okay, uh, at the first uh, website that's given on screen. Okay, and as uh, as for the topic that we are discussing today, I further give to you, share with you, okay, two other website which give you some uh, slides on the topics of index number. Uh, with regards to the uh, Kuala Lumpur or uh, Bursa Saham uh, index, okay, you can refer to Bursa Malaysia website. So now we are looking actually what are the definition of index number? What is an index number? So in this case, index number is being used to measure changes in the price or maybe changes in quantity or can be changes in the value of a group of articles or commodity over a specific period of time. Okay, so in this case, I'm not talking about changes in price of one car, okay, from this year to next year. 
Okay, um, uh, okay. We are not talking about changes in the value of one house. We are talking about changes of uh, prices of car. Okay, we have the different ma uh, car makers. Okay, with the di different uh, subtype of cars. Okay, we are, we have the different type of houses in Malaysia. Okay, from the low cost. Okay, to the terrace. Okay, to the bungalows. Okay, to the high rise. Okay, so basically, if we are talking about uh, the rental index, we are talking about Overall, okay, for this group of houses, okay, what are the increase in price or for a group of food item or for a group of everything that we spend daily on a daily basis, okay, how much price has increased over the year? So, we are talking about a group of articles or a group of commodity over a specific period of time, okay? So, in, uh, for example, when we discuss price index, the keyword is price. So, in this case, index number is being used to compare the current price of a group of articles with the corresponding price of that group at some time in the past. So, in this case, okay, for index number, time in the past is always referred as the base year, while index at the base date is always set at 100. Why they always set index number uh, base year at 100? So that it's easier for you to find the percentage increase since the base date. Okay, so in this case, if you come across uh, an information, for example, August 2005, consumer price index stood at 131.8, what does it mean? Okay, it means that uh, if given that January 1999 is the base year, okay, so if the CPI in August 2005 stood at 131.8, so that means from January 99 to August 2005, price has increased by 31.8%. So that is the average price increase in all goods and services that is being calculated. So now we have come to uh, the specific uses of index. So as we already discussed just now, the main use of index number is basically to find the rate of inflation. Okay, so uh, when you study in macroeconomics, okay, when you discuss inflation, that's where you need to discuss about consumer price index. If you are studying uh, the supply, okay, uh, production side of economics, you need to discuss the industrial or the manufacturing production index. If you are studying money and banking, perhaps, okay, uh, you need to study about the uh, Bursa Malaysia Composite Index. So that is the main use of index. Uh, other than that, index number is also used in wage negotiation. So in this case, uh, let's say that uh, myself, I'm working for the, I'm working uh, under the government. So in this case, let's say QPAX, okay, uh, talking about uh, demanding for wage increase. So what are the basis for demanding wage increase? So we say that, oh, the CPI from this year to this year has increased by this much, but our wage is not increasing, so we demand a higher wages. So that is basically the use of index in terms of wage negotiation. So in terms of how much you would like to increase in wage, so definitely you want the increase in wage greater than the increase in price. If price increase by 10%, your wages also increase by 10%, basically your standard of living will remain the same because you have no extra income. Okay, and the other uses of index is in terms of index linking. We'll come across that later. And as well as to calculate the purchasing power of the currency. So that's not the use of index. So when we discuss about index number, there are two types of index that is uh, very important for you to understand. So the first one is what we call as last phase index and the second one is what we call as Parch index. I'm not sure about my pronunciation, uh, I got it right. So last phase and Parch index. Okay, the spelling is exactly like that. I think uh, it's someone's name. Okay, so in this case, last price index is used to compare the cost of a basket of good at base year with the current year. So we're talking about a basket of good and services at base year. For example, base year can be in the year 2000, base year can be in the year 1997, okay, the earlier year. Okay, you compare, okay, what are the price of the, that basket of good and services now? So in this case, last price index is also known as the base weighted index. Okay, if you're talking about price uh, index, so base weighted price index. The second type of index is what we call as Parch index. So Parch index is used to compare the cost of the current basket of goods at the current year with the cost of the same basket of goods okay, at the base year. 
So in this case, we are talking about current basket of goods, the price now, and compare with the uh, previous year or the base year prices of the current basket of goods. So such that Parsh index is also known as the current weighted index. So again, I would like to remind you, last page in that, we are talking about basket of goods and services from the base year. Okay, we compare the price. While Parsh in that, we are talking about the current basket of goods and we compare the price. Based on the de definition that is shared with you earlier, so you now uh, uh, you will now see the formula for the calculation of last payers and Parsh price index. Okay, let's talk about the last payers price index first. So last payers price index is referring to the basket of goods at the base here. Okay, so in this case, let's say we are talking about the last payers price index. Because uh, index can be in terms of price or index can be in terms of quantity. So for last payers price index, look at the middle column. Okay, the first row middle column. So in this case, we are comparing the cost of basket of goods at base year with the current year. So that's why if you look at the formula, okay, that uh, sigma symbol for the summation, okay, price P1 is referring to price in the current period or current year, uh, while P0 is referring to the price in the base year, okay, while Q0 is the quantity of goods in the base year. So in this case, if you look at the numerator part, okay, the one on top uh, part of the formula, so you are multiplying the current price with the base year quantity. Okay, while on the denumerator part, the bottom part of the formula, you are multiplying okay, the base year price with base year quantity. So in this case, the quanti quantity for both numerator and denumerator in the formula is basically the same. Uh, basket of goods and services at the base year. You are looking at changes in price. That's why we call it last payers price index. So it must be current year price, okay, over the base year price. And we are using quantity of the base year. Okay, so that is uh, one part of the formula for last payers. If we are talking about the last payers quantity index, okay, the left, uh, right hand side of the screen, okay, we are still talking about last payers, so in the first row, okay, so you see that when we talk about quantity index, quantity index means you are measuring changes in quantity, such that, okay, price, okay, now remain the same at base year. So if you look at the formula, the numerator, okay, we are referring to uh, base year price, P0, numerator, as well as P0 for the denumerator. What change in the formula is that now we are measuring okay, the current year quantity Q1 over the uh, base year quantity Q0. So in this case, you need to calculate the, uh, the price multiply with the current year quantity. Okay, You add everything up and you divide with price multiply with the base year quantity okay, and multiply with 100. This will give you the last payers quantity index. So the formula, it looks the same, but bear in mind, they are different, okay? So when we talk about last payers price index, you are measuring price changes. So last payers, okay, uh, that means uh, quantity of the base year Q0. If you are talking about last payers quantity index, you are measuring changes in quantity. So in, the, in that case, okay, price remain the same at base year price, while quantity that is being measured uh, in terms of their changes. Okay, so we are done with last payers. Now we move on to the second type of index number. Okay, basically what we call as Parsh index. So Parsh index, by definition, we are comparing the cost of the current basket of goods. Okay, so in this case, we are talking about uh, Parsh price index. Okay, so in this case, again, we are looking at uh, percentage change in price. So if you look at the formula now, the middle column, okay, for Parsh index, okay, uh, Parsh price index, we are measuring P1, price of current year, over price of base year. And for each numerator and denumerator, you multiply with the current year quantity. So this is where, okay, the Parsh price index differ from the last payers price index on top. Okay, we are still measuring uh, changes in price, P1 over P0, but this time you multiply with the current year basket of goods and services, Q1 instead of Q0. So same thing, okay, if we are talking about Parsh quantity index, 
to measure changes in uh, quantity according to the Parsh methods. So you you you, you take the the quantity of current year over the quantity of base year. Okay, each of these numerator denominator you multiply with the current year price. So it looks like you have to memorize form formula, but it, uh, no worry. What you need to remember is basically just one formula. So the difference between price and quantity is just that, okay, price we are talking about P1 over P0, while quantity index we are talking about Q1 over Q0. In last payers uh, method, we are talking about the use of uh, base year, okay, price or base year quantity, while PASH price index, okay, we are talking about the use of current year quantity. Okay, that's all that you need to remember. So again, we are looking at the comparison between last payers and PASH indexes. So in this case, why we need to use last payers index in some cases? Okay, what are the strength of last payers index? So in this case, because last payers index is using uh, the uh, base year basket of goods and services, so in this case, okay, it has the strength that quantity of goods have to be found only for the base year. Okay, so let's say for example, we are talking about the CPI formulation using last payers. So you need to find what are the quantity of goods that an individual in Malaysia consume, for example, in 1980. Okay, so in that case, from 1980, okay, over the years up to 2013, you can actually make comparison between the year. Okay, from 1980 to 19, uh, 2013, because the same basket of goods and services are being used. But the problem with using this last price index, okay, it has uh, some weaknesses, for example, Base year quantity may not represent current consumption. If we are talking about, if you take a, a common person in 1980, does that person have a lot of uh, spending per month, for example, on telecommunication, on petrol, for example? So if you if you take the basket in 1980, the basket of goods and services in 2013 very much different. Nowadays we spend a lot on petrol, we spend a lot on telecommunication. Okay, in terms of our smartphone, in terms of our data services and all that. So the basic quantity may not represent current consumption. So consumer taste change and if you use last price index, this is not being reflected in the index. So the second weaknesses for last price index is that it overstates the price increase. Okay, and on the other hand, when you use PASH index, so remember by definition, Parsh index is using the uh, current year quantity. So in this case, it has a, a strength in the sense that the current year quantity represents current consumption. But, okay, when you calculate using the current year quantity, that means, okay, this is also a weakness in the sense that quantity of the goods have to be found for each year. Okay, and in that case, comparison can be made with the, uh, uh, between that year and the base year. Okay, and uh, <coughs> PASH index understate price increase. And in practice, we find it difficult to find current year quantity. Let's look at one example, okay, in terms of calculating the last payers price index as well as the PASH price index. So in this case, we have on the left hand side of the screen, in the, uh, in the first column, a basket of goods in the sense that uh, to make it simpler, okay, our basket of goods is consists of three different type of commodity. That is commodity A, commodity B, and commodity C. We have data for two different years. Okay, we have year one, okay, and then we have year six. So in this case, it's understood that year one is our base year. So for each year, we have the price of the commodity as well as the qu uh, quantity, okay, for year one as well as the quantity and price for year six. So if you look at commodity A in the examples, Okay, the price in year 1 is 80. Okay, and uh, from year 1 to year 6, price has now increased from 80 to 100. While the demand, okay, in this case, uh, for commodity A has increased from 6 to 7. What about commodity B? Commodity B, okay, the price in year 1 is 140 with quantity demanded, okay, uh, only 8. But the price now, okay, almost double to 250. And the quantity in year 6 has reduced to 5. While commodity C, price uh, in year 1 is 100. 
and then increase a little bit to year six by uh, 30 ringgit to 130 and the quantity increase a little bit from five to six so you see that there is a variation okay commodity a price increase quantity also increase while uh, commodity b price increase but quantity reduce uh, for commodity C, price increases a bit, okay, and quantity increase. So overall, if you are the policy maker, so if you are the economist in this case, okay, we are not interested about the increase in price of uh, commodity A or B or C only. We are talking about the general price level, okay. So if the question is from year one to year six, has price increased or not? So in that case, you cannot simply look at this table. Okay, you need to calculate your index number. So remember the formula for large players and the Parsh index number just now. So you need to calculate these four different columns. Okay, in the first column, you need to calculate the current year price multiplied with the base year quantity. Okay, in the second column, you calculate the base year quantity with the base year price. Okay, and for the three different commodity. Same thing, okay, for the third column, you calculate the uh, current year price with the uh, current year quantity okay for all three commodity and you add up so that will give you the summation and the fourth column okay you calculate the uh, current year quantity with the uh, base year price okay so you, after you have done this and then you can plug in okay the summation okay the total in the formula so given the data just now let's say that uh, someone is asking you Okay, what is the last Bayer's price index in terms of how much uh, price has increased? Okay, from year 1 to year 6 according to the last Bayer's method. So remember, last Bayer's means, okay, base year quantity. So look at the formula, Q0, Q0, okay, both numerator, denominator, they are the same. But now, we are talking about last Bayer's price index, so changes in price. So P1 over P0. Okay, so we already done the calculation just now. Summation of P1 multiplied with Q0 over summation of P0 multiplied with Q0. So once you have this, okay, 3250 divided by 2100 multiplied with 100. So you have your index 154.8. Okay, so in this case, we have the increase in price from year 1 to year 6 by 54.8% on average. Okay, taking into account there are goods that increase in price, there are goods that is reducing in price. So that is last phase. Okay, what about the Parsh price index? By definition, okay, Parsh uh, index uh, is using the current year quantity. So Q1 in the numerator and Q1 also in the denumerator. For price index, we are measuring the changes in price. So P1 over P0. So we already done the calculation. So you have the summation of P1 multiplied with Q1, okay, which is 2,730. And then you also have the summation of P0 multiplied with Q1, okay, 1,860. Multiplied with 100, the two ratio, uh, the two value just now. So you have this uh, Parsh price index 144.8. Okay, so we are talking about the same basket of goods and services. Okay, it's just that last payers is using the base year quantity while Parsh index is using the current year quantity. So you see that the index for last five years is a bit higher, 154, so an increase of 54.8%, while the Parsh price index is a bit lower, 146, an increase of 46.8%. So that's why, okay, we say that uh, disadvantages of last five years index, it tends to overstate, okay, increase in price. As for the Parsh index, it tends to understate the increase in price. We are still talking about uh, last values and price index, but this time, okay, I'm going to show to you the calculation of quantity index. So this is a different, okay, in the, in the sense that we are looking now at changes in quantity, okay. So the formula looks uh, more or less the same. So you have to be careful in exam, okay. What does the question is asking you, okay? Uh, okay. So in this case, uh, is the question asking you about quantity index or price index? Because we have two different methods, last values and parts, okay, but for two different type of uh, index, quantity or price. So in this case, let's say you are being asked to calculate the last values quantity index. So you want to know what are the changes in uh, quantity, okay, on average, okay, instead of talking about commodity A changed by this much, commodity B changed by this much, we are, we are interested to know, okay, 
on average this basket of goods and services okay so remember when we talk about the cpi we are not talking about one commodity three commodity i told you just now we're talking about 260 commodity okay so in this case you need to consider each of this commodity or uh, goods okay in terms of their quantity changes as well as price changes for the price index so in this case okay back to our quantity index okay we are measuring quantity uh, the changes in quantity so q1 over q0 uh, according to the last various methods okay we are taking the base year price okay so that's why if you look at the formula base year price p0 multiplied with the current year quantity okay you find the uh, summation okay over the summation of the base year price multiplied with the base year quantity multiplied with 100 so based on the column that you already calculated so 1860 over 2100 multiplied with 100 so you have uh, an index of 88.6 so it's understood okay year one is the base year uh, index of 100 so now in year six okay the last price quantity index is 88.6 so 100 uh, minus 88.6 so we have about 11.4 percent reduction in quantity okay so remember just now community a b and c some quantity increase some quantity reduce okay so for the overall basket on average quantity has reduced by 100 minus 88.6 okay so that's the difference uh, if you look at the Parsh quantity index, so we have okay uh, the changes in quantity, but this time using the current year price. So if you look at the formula, you take the current year price P1 multiply with the current year quantity, okay the summation, divide by the summation of current year price multiply with current year quantity. So this ratio you multiply with 100, so you take 2730 over 3250 multiply with 100, so you get 88.4. So there's still a slight changes, a slight difference between last price quantity index and Parsh quantity index. And because we are still measuring the same basket of goods, okay, for these two different methods, last price or Parsh, so you cannot find, for example, last price index quantity reduced. Okay, or Parsh index quantity increase. Okay, they have to be uh, in the same direction. Quantity, both quantity reduce according to the last Bayes index or Parsh index. It's just that the quantum or the, the, uh, the, the actual measure of reduction is different a little bit. In order to improve your understanding further, I'm going to share with you another example. Okay, in, uh, in the usage of last Bayes price index as well as the Parsh quantity index. So we have the following data which shows, uh, I'm going to show it to you after this, the quantities and price of four components purchased by a company in 2005 and 2010. So here we're talking about index is not only for the CPI at the macroeconomics, but it's also used in the microeconomic if you are, for example, the production manager in one plant or one uh, uh, company, so you want to know okay the overall okay changes in price and quantity. So if we take four different components, okay, and we measure them okay, in terms of changes from 2005 and 2010, what we are going to see. So in this case, the question is asking you to calculate a last price price index, which shows the change in price between the two years, 2005-2010. And then we are going to do the same thing, but this time using the Parsh Quantity Index, we show the change in quantity. And of course, at the end of the day, okay, whatever that we do statistically, okay, under this quantitative economics, you must always interpret your results. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, that uh, whatever that you calculated just now in part one and part two. So let's have a look at the data now. So this is the data. So as I uh, share with you, we have four different product components, or in this case, commodity or components or product or whatever. Okay, and we have two different year, 2005 as well as 2010. So for each year, we have the price and we also have the quantity for each of the components for, uh, for 2005 as well as for 2010. If you look at one by one, okay, look at the, uh, the first component. The price okay in 2005 is 5 ringgit while the price in 2010 is 8 ringgit 50 cents. Okay? So in this case you see that for component 1, okay, price has increased and quantity has reduced from 200 to 180. 
Okay, in the uh, in the second component or the second commodity, price has also increased. Okay, from ten ringgit to thirteen ringgit and fifty cent, while the quantity has reduced from hundred fifty to hundred twenty. Same thing for commodity three or component number three, price per unit eight ringgit, uh, increased to two thousand ten ten ringgit, while quantity reduced from hundred to ninety five. Okay, and in this case for component four. Price per unit twelve ringgit fifty, uh, div uh, increased to fifteen ringgit fifty cents, while quantity has reduced from eighty to seventy. Okay, so you notice that all four components are having a reduction in quantity as a result of increasing price. But because of the different uh, amount of price involved, so you need to know what is the average increase in price for this whole company. Based on what being asked in the question, so this is what you need to calculate first. Okay, so for all four components, okay, you need to calculate in the second column. Okay, the current year price multiplied with the current year quantity P one multiplied with Q zero. You add them up, and then the third column you need to uh, calculate the base year price multiplied with the uh, base year quantity P zero multiplied with Q zero. Okay, and uh, in the final column you need to calculate the uh, current year price multiplied with the current year quantity. So the total line, uh, the total uh, part is what you need to plug into the formula. So in the first part of the question, okay, which asks for you to calculate the last payers price index. So we are looking at the changes in price using the base year quantity. So in this case, uh, five thousand nine hundred sixty-five divided by four thousand three hundred multiplied with hundred. Okay, so you get the last raised price index of 138.7. Okay, as for the partial quantity index in part B, we are looking at the changes in quantity. Okay, partial index means the current year price. So 5185 divided by 5965 from your earlier tables, okay, multiply by 100, so you get the partial quantity index 86.9. So what does it tells you? Okay, these two figure last price price index of one three eight point seven, as well as the price quantity index of eighty six point nine. What does it tells you is that price has increased on average. Okay, taking into account the different components, the different amount of increase per component. So price on average has increased by thirty eight point seven, from year six to uh, from year one to year six. On the other hand, according to the Parsh quantity index, okay, quantity has now reduced by thirteen point one percent. How do we get thirteen point one percent? Because base year index is hundred, is understood. So in this case, the current, uh, the parsh quantity index of eighty six point nine. So a difference of hundred minus eighty six point nine that will give you the quantity reduction of thirteen point one percent. So that how you interpret your index number. So for uh in the current uh part okay we are looking at how we calculate index number using price relative and weight okay so when do we use this uh price relative and weight uh in the case of unknown quantity okay so if we are discussing housing the expenditure on the item at base year is being used as a weight so weighted index number is given as um summation of w i multiplied with summation of w. Where W is the weight and I is the price relative. So price relative is given as P one over the P zero multiplied by hundred. If we are talking about quantity relative, is given as Q one over Q zero multiplied by hundred. So this is in the case that you do not know the current year quantity. For further use of index numbers, we need to look at the change of base year. So in the case of uh, changing base year. So you need to splice your index. So we call this index splicing or putting together two different index so that you can actually make comparison of price over a longer period of time. So given that in base year weighting, okay, the quantity and type of commodity by today may well be different from those in the base year such that the base year has to be changed periodically. So if you look at the consumer price index from Malaysia, okay, from the earlier a uh, part of uh, its calculation until today okay the base year has been changed okay for example last time we have uh, base year of 2000 before that base year 1974 okay and lot other base years according to which 
uh, uh, year uh, index that you are referring to. So let's look at this example in terms of changing your base year or what we call as index pricing. So you are given the information that the index for the consumer prices or CPI in United Kingdom, this is what they call as the retail price index, the RPI. But we use the consumer price index in, for uh, Malaysia. So the CPI for October 2000, okay, given that January 1997 is the base year, 100. Okay, so October 2000, okay, uh, the CPI is 131.8. For the CPI for January 1997, okay, with January 1984, 100. Uh, as the base here was 394.5 so in this case okay you're being asked to calculate the CPI for October 2000 with January 1984 equals to 100 so that is the information given to you in the paragraph as well as what the question is asking for you to do so you put that uh, information okay uh, data into the tables so you have three different dates in the first line okay for October uh, 2000 given that uh, base year nine, January 1997 100 so you have the index 131.8 so that is the right hand side column okay while in the middle column that is referring to the second line of information the CPI for January 1997 okay uh, is January 1997 is 394.5 but the base year now is much earlier January 1984 okay which is set at 100 so you are now being asked, okay, what is the CPI for October 2000, okay, the X in red, okay, given January 1984 equals to 100. So X is the, the quantity that you need to look for. So given that uh, from 100 to 131.8, okay, is for the same basket of goods and services for the same period of time, so that means the same ratio of increase from 100 to 131.8 should be followed from January 1997, uh, 394.5 to October 2000, okay, whatever the amount that we are looking for. So given that the ratio is the same, okay, for this figure, so if you take X over 394.5, that is the increase in the middle column, okay, it should be the same with the increase in the uh, right-hand side column, 131.8 over 100. So simple mathematics, uh, X is the unknown, you know the rest, okay, you move around a little bit, so X is equal, okay, uh, 394.5 multiplied with 131.8 divided by 100, so you get an index of 520. So in this case, okay, this is example of index splicing. So from January 1984, base year, index is 100. Increase to January 1997 to 394.5. So further in October 2000, the index has increased to 520. So you cannot get a figure for X less than 394. Why? Because according to the right-hand side column, price has increased in January 1997 to October 2000. So by right, okay, you should have the same amount of increment from January 1997 to October 2000 with base year in 1984. Another usage of uh, index number is what we call as index linking. This is what I already mentioned earlier. So the retail price index in UK or the consumer price index for Malaysia, uh, this is often used for index linking with wages and pensions. Okay, so in this case, companies agree to increase wages in line with increase in the uh, retail price index or the consumer price index. So we are talking about okay inflation. It tells you about the cost of living increase. Okay, so it's, in this case we need to demand higher wages. So we use index linking. Let's look at one short example on the usage of index linking. So in this case you are given the information that the wage of a person is linked with the increase in the RPI or the CPI. Okay. So in this case, an employee was paid uh, 1,500 ringgit per month in January 1994. So given that the CPI was 394.5 in January 2007 and 530 in 2010 with January 1994 equals to 100. So find the employee wage in January 2007 
as well as October 2010. So how you're going to do this? We are going to see that. Now. So in order for you to calculate for January 2007, so the increase in price ratio uh, should be similar, okay, from 100 to 394.5. So that's one side. So the new uh, amount of wages, okay, should be uh, x over 1,500. So okay, uh, if you look at the equations, okay, the ratio between the increase in index, okay, with the increase in wages should be the same. But we do not know how much is the increase in wages. What are the new wage, uh, in actual fact? So x is the unknown. So rearrange your equations. So bring uh one thousand five hundred to the left hand side of the equations. So one thousand five hundred multiplied with three hundred ninety four point five divided by hundred. That will give you your wage should. Now increase to five thousand nine hundred and seventeen ringgit fifty cents. Okay, that is so. Uh, okay, uh, this is to consider that price has increased from one hundred to three hundred ninety four point five. There is a lot of increment over the years, so your wage also should increase a lot. Okay, by the same ratio. As for the October two thousand ten, uh, we follow the same procedure. Okay, so remember, okay, the same procedure. So now, if you look at the left hand side of the equations, okay, uh, on the left hand side most, okay, so you have price increase from hundred to five hundred twenty. So that is the index of price increase. But your wage initially one thousand five hundred. So you want to know what is your wage now if price has increased to five hundred twenty. So in that case, rearrange, okay, for you to solve the unknown x. So one thousand five hundred multiplied with five hundred twenty divided by hundred. So your wage, okay, by the same ratio of price increase, your wage should also increase. Now your wage should be seven thousand eight hundred. Okay, so that is basically what we call as index linking. Okay, wage should be linked with the increase in price. So we have come to the end of these uh, topics on index numbers. So by now you should be able to calculate, okay, between last payers and past index. For both price and quantity, remember you must understand. Okay, what are the difference between last payers and past index? Okay, in terms of the advantages and disadvantages of last payers and past index number. Okay, you must be able also to put together different index uh, numbers. Okay, we call that uh, index splicing, and you must be able also to use the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. Okay, for index linking with pensions, or perhaps or with wages. Okay, so that's all for under the topic of index number.